Okay, so again, uh, glad to be here. Um, good, good day to everybody. Uh, my name is Yi. I want to talk about now a popular and trending topic, uh, AI uh, and APIs, and especially in the API documentation. Also share a little bit of uh, what we are working on at uh, Superface. Now, Lara, uh, you, you make a very nice intro, so I can uh, just blast through it. I was uh, with APRA for, for a long time and almost uh, from the start, basically. And uh, yes, we, we were perhaps the first API design platform. Things that are normal today, treat your API as a product that was not so normal uh, 10, 10 years ago. So that's what we pioneered. And then I moved to good API consulting and I had the the privilege to work with the largest companies we have on this planet, like Deutsche Post, DHL, or in the text, mother company of Zara, shaping uh, their API strategy and executing that API strategy. And uh, during those times, basically, whenever I went, the problems with APIs were the same. And I'm sure if you are working with APIs, you have already noticed it doesn't really matter. Uh, the settings are different, uh, whether you are in the bank or logistics or fashion but the problems with the APIs are repeating over and over. And that's why I started Superface. And that doesn't stand for um, Predeface or anything. It stands for a, a super interface. So we started uh, three years ago uh, and uh, got, uh, got our investment round. And we are really trying to fix some problems, uh, fundamental problems with the API and how uh, machine uh, should talk to machine in the future. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the, this talk. Now, we need to start to look at the, at the current situation with the SaaS and APIs and API integration and what I call API integration fatigue. There is simply, we got to the point when there is simply too many SaaS applications everybody is using. And with that comes, uh, in API integrations are also coming with that. Now, APIs got to the point where they are quite a hefty burden but for both parties, the producers, the providers of APIs, but also for the consumers. And accelerated by the pandemic, over 80% of the companies are stating that they, uh, they basically need to integrate more and more APIs. But one of the interesting numbers uh, from these uh, reports that I found is that an average SaaS needs 15 integrations to other APIs. And in average, it takes them 700 days. So basically, if you are building a SaaS product, you are looking at good two years of integrating. And if you look more into, uh, into these researches, the largest uh, SaaS and cloud uh, applications there, they have hundreds and thousands of integrations. So given that the, you know, the, the speed of building 15 integrations for 700 days in average, uh, building something like Okta has or Salesforce or replicating that Shopify uh, number of integration, that would take you a couple of decades. Of course, you can hire more engineers to do that, but still crazy number and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, APIs to be integrated over and over and over. Now, we might be asking why the integration takes so long. Like what's, what's the problem here? And here's the truth. And I'm not sure if uh, you know, many people are realizing it, but the truth about the typical integration project is that we plan for analysis, for development, for testing, and then finally for deployment of the integration. So I'm not talking about building APIs, but uh, integration with an API within a given time frame, within a given time budget. But the reality is, is that the analysis step takes uh, always the longest. It's always the one that is underestimated and very often it's neglected. So, and this is confirmed not only my, my experience, but uh, you know, with other fellow experts in the field, API consultants, everybody confirms. And I'm sure if you will start thinking about it, uh, that when you want to integrate an API, you probably spend more time with uh, analyzing uh, how to do it than the actual development. And this is the implication because usually the time frame is fixed. So the development has to happen, but then the testing is the one that's uh, suffering. So, if you look at API analysis, what, what's going on there? Uh, we were, last summer, we were uh, asking and surveying uh, our users and customers, and we, did, we interviewed, I think, 53 companies, and here are the six uh, top obstacles when integrating APIs. And number one has to go with my favorite theme and topic, and that's uh, understanding. And that's understanding uh, between uh, your API user and you as an API provider. So when, whenever a user comes to your API, they need to do a mapping, right? They, they might call uh, something uh, job position, 
uh, but you can call it open listings and whatnot. And a lot of uh, uh, this mapping has to happen. This, this understanding between, the, between these two parties has to happen. And that's also what takes a, a you know, significant chunk of, uh, of analysis. Next thing is a simple question. Can this API fulfill my use case? I want to do this and that. Can this API deliver? what I want. And figuring this one out, analyzing the API documentation, analyzing the actual API, maybe making the API calls, it's also taking a lot of time. To the point that sometimes even the actual API integration is needed. So you need to build a little uh, POC or MEP if you want. Uh, and so you are like halfway already integrating, but to the point that you are only, only just trying to figure out whether that API can do what you want. And then you might throw it away. So you can clearly see that this this is a time consuming thing. Uh, another unfortunate thing is that if I want to do something very simple, but I need to understand the entire documentation, all the nitty gritty details of everything and uh, including the kitchen sink, you know, so, so think about it. If somebody has a, some, uh, you know, a, a very, very small and simple use or what should be a simple use case, but they need to understand the entirety of your, of your system, of your APIs. And, then there are internal factors. So it's not only on the API's provider shoulders, but very often people who need to integrate API, they are not sure about what are their own product requirements. What is it actually they are building or how they should be building it? So you need to take this also into account when thinking about why is analysis taking so long. Finally, the good old uh, quality of documentation, outdated documentation, outdated API spec. I'm sure uh, this has been discussed uh, for the uh, last 10 years many, many times over and over. But, uh, you know, the last point I want to make here is the access, the access problems. And we see it very often that somebody wants to integrate with an API, but they have problems, uh, you know, going through some sort of certification or partnerships program, understanding the terms and whatnot. These are all actual big hurdles uh, in, in uh, successful API integration. Now, we might be asking, okay, so with these answers from, from the actual respondents, what are the, the areas of analysis? We are looking at the business problems. So the, the last uh, uh, point I discussed, like commercial rules, limits, regulations, SLAs, and whatnot. How do I get the access to the API basically and what it costs me? Then there are the product aspects, the, the, you know, the, the important thing about your API, what it offers, what are the capabilities, what use cases can your API fulfill? And then finally, the technical details, the implementation, here be your API calls, here be your JSON, here be your API specifications. So these are roughly the three areas, the way I think about it, that needs to be analyzed in, uh, in, in, when you want to integrate an API. Now, today, API documentation focuses on what I think is the wrong default, and that's the implementation. Most of the documentations are very technical, they uh, document uh, the technical interface and they are not focusing on the business and product aspect. And the technical interface is the one that changes the mobile phone. That's also you know, uh, one important thing to understand when, when you think about it. And API, as such API documentations are focusing heavily on the how to connect, but not what is being offered and how can I get access to it and what's, you know, what's the cost of accessing it. Uh, the business side is usually underdocumented. Now, here are some examples. Uh, this is a here.com. Uh, quite simple task, you know, just to illustrate a quite simple task, like turning a GPS location, latitude and longitude into street address. Chances are you are not an expert. You have no idea what isoline routing is, matrix routing is and whatnot. And you need to understand the, the complexity here to just basically turn a latitude and longitude into you know, a street address. Uh, and here is another example. And this is, of course, AWS. It has to be in every, every, you know, this type of a presentation. And this is uh, sending email. You want to send an email, a very simple thing, or what should be a very simple thing. If you look at this page, there is a very little about, uh, um, about the sending email here. It's just really not helping you to get uh, to even understand whether you can actually send an email with this. But here's my favorite. Uh, a while back, a friend of mine asked me, hey, uh, our customers are having problems integrating with this, AP this API. Can you help us with Superface? And he sent me this link. And I'll pause here for like five seconds so you can just read the first sentence. 
relies on FAPI RW as a means for authenticating, authenticating PSUs and TPPs, and et cetera, et cetera. I, and this is the basics, according to the documentation. This is the problem space. Chances are, if you are not uh, from FinTech, you have no idea what's going on here. And if you were looking at integrating these APIs, you are looking at days and maybe weeks of analyzing it, understanding the domain in the first place and mapping it to uh, think that uh, you maybe had it in your head, like make a payment or give me a bank account uh, balance. So what are we doing to minimize the analysis times today? Uh, obviously, we are improving the documentation. We are adding more information. And we are maybe focusing more on, a, on a documenting uh, the, the, the models and the data structures. We are providing SDKs examples, collections, how to make the call, so it's uh, faster to make the call. Uh, but more importantly, there are these uh, attempts on standardization or harmonization. Standardization, it's a nice idea. I'm not a big fan of uh, canonical data models. Like, uh, I don't think everybody should be speaking the same language, but uh, it might help uh, and it might reduce uh, this type of analysis uh, uh, significantly. And that's why we are also seeing this sort of unified APIs, the APIs in front of other APIs, companies like Nylas, Hyperswitch, Metapack, Merge, they are basically doing this harmonization in front of, for example, with Metapack, other logistic companies, because chances are, if you want to you know, uh, make a shipment globally, you don't want to be integrating with, uh, with uh, whoever is uh, fulfilling the shipment in Vietnam, in the US, in Europe, and whatnot. So this is, these are the current, current tools of trades, but we can do, of course, better, and that's why we are here. So what will be the next, next generation of, uh, you know, this analyzing APIs for purposes of integrations? Now, first thing I want to mention, some sort of analysis will be always needed, at least for non-commodities. And by commodities, I mean uh, capabilities that have a lot of providers, like sending text messages, sending emails, those eventually can even you know be fully automated and have a, a have a, have the analysis step almost reduced but for the rest there will still be some work needed in this uh, in this step of integration so there are, here are two two main approaches uh how we can speed up uh analysis when integrating apr and one is of course using uh the la large language models and nlp meaning natural language processing and all men the human operator help a, a developer or the reader of the documentation to find uh what the, he or she wants to do with that apr really quick um the other would be a really a truly machine to machine communication so bringing this self in concept of self-integrating applications to life and enable your software to go out, figure out what to connect and how to connect and connect autonomously. But I'm not going to talk about this uh, today. We'll focus on, on uh, NLP and uh, using uh, large language models. So how this can work, what's actually going on here? So you know, there has been a lot of development recently with ChatGPT, and we'll get to it. But it recently all started uh, with the GitHub and their co-pilot, where you uh, basically have this coding uh, body in your uh, uh, developer's editor. When you can write the comment in the code, and it will pre-fill a stub code with, uh, with uh, you know, what might be the actual API integration. So here, you really uh, basically are asking the co-pilot, hey, I need to do this and that, determine the sentiment of the text, right? And it will pick some pre-selected uh, service. It will create and generate the code for you. And you probably want to edit it and tweak it a little bit. But it helps you basically to get that capability, get that use case, because that's what you care at the end of the day. You don't care about post method. You don't care about content type. You need to get that sentiment uh, analyzed here, right? So GitHub Copilot was, you know, in a way, a first modern approach to bring uh, to reduce the time of, uh, of uh, API analysis, albeit not directly meant for APIs only. Now, this is, of course, a lot of limitations. It works uh, for large corpus for, for APIs that are public and that have been used for, for that has been around for uh, quite a while, but uh, it, can, it can be somewhat helpful. Another approach, another model, large language model, uh, Jurassic 10, uh, takes uh, into account more recent events and more recent data, and it can be used nicely to help the API design or help the API interaction design. 
what I mean by this. You can ask like, okay, what ACP method I should use to make a payment? So make a payment would be your plain language use case description, but you, let's say you are not so savvy with HTTP protocol and this algorithm is, uh, can tell you like, hey, you know, probably the, the right one to use is a post HTTP method. Taking it next, taking us to what's basically current, it's GPT-3 and ChatGPT. I'm sure this is the first time you're hearing this. Uh, but th these models can be quite smart, cognitively smart, uh, and I, I'll give you direct answers. How do I, given this API, how do I fulfill, how do I fulfill order, for example? And as you can see, this is an excellent response. Uh, it can tell you, hey, use this patch request on this URL with these parameters, with this and that body. That's already interesting. Now, it's still, it still needs a human operator. Basically, you need to go and figure out whether this is correct, because these algorithms are very good at coming uh, with answers, even if they are not real. So th there is a one, one disclaimer right there. Uh, but it might point you to the right points in the documentation, uh, especially, for example, if you, you know, ask a, a Twitter, uh, well, they just closed their API. <laughs> That's going to be, be a good example. But the, when you ask Twitter, I need to see the tweets. Uh, it points you to the, it pointed you to the timelines endpoint, and that's some some mental mapping that you need to do in the analysis. So it can help a lot. Now we wanted to take it even further, and this is why we are building the, uh, a tool that we call Edgar. And Superface Edgar is basically analyzing, pre-analyzing uh, API documentation. So it's pulling information from your API documentation that might be structured data, uh, open API spec, or your uh, HTML or any other plain text format that you might have here in your documentation. And then it, it takes these large models and some other algorithms and basically distills uh, the integration code, which is then distributed to your application at the runtime to make the API call. So this is the Superface Edgar. Uh, it, this is how it looks uh, with the UI. So we simply really write uh, your uh, your use case, you state uh, what capability, what you want, you pick the vendor and uh, you will get the basically integration instructions, how you connect your application. Now, we were thinking this, it, it doesn't feel right. You, you need to go to Superface to get this. We were thinking where we can this, where we can take this further. And this is where I think it fits into the theme of, uh, of API the dogs. Uh, and bring the AI uh, to the API documentation. So here's an example. This is a Sonos. They make a very nice products, uh, speakers and whatnot, smart speakers and really cool, cool stuff. And they, they have a, a quite nice API. The problem is the API is not so effortless to use, right? So we were, and this is like real story, we were actually trying to connect uh, to API to some speakers in the office and, and it was actually very difficult to figure it out how, how it should be done. Now we were thinking, okay, we may we might be able to put Edgar into into this, and this is a mock. This is not uh, this is not a, a real uh, Sonos developer uh, API documentation. But imagine, and this is where I want to sparkle your imagination. Imagine there will be this input field on an API documentation where you simply state your use case. And in our case, that would be, hey, I want to play. Uh, a music on uh, on a speaker, right? That's quite you know obvious thing, and it will use the Edgar behind the scenes and gives you the integration code directly to your application, and you will get going. So in this sense, the API documentation is really giving catering to your use cases because you know if you are writing an API documentation for somebody, you are of course. If you are having an API product manager, they are of course trying to think about their use cases, but it will never be like if they can write them on their own and get a integration code with your API. No, now the question really is where if this works, where does this leave us? How this will change the API documentation? Now, when we don't need to focus on the technical parts, I'm not saying the technical parts are going completely away. So de describing the, you know, the technicalities of uh, how to make a call, but they eventually will go away or they will just, you know, be really, as I said, at the start of the talk, an implementation detail. Now, the question to all of us is how the future documentation of an API will look like where we won't be where we won't need to focus on 
the technical is on how to connect, but probably on uh, more on a product, what the API is offering, what are what is the what are the capabilities and how you can get access, how you get uh, you know how do you pay maybe for that API. Here are some of my answers. I think we'll be documenting more the business aspects, of course, as I mentioned it. There will be the explanation of the business models will be the major thing together with uh, the definition of the use cases or illustration of the use cases, because users will be able to stay their own use cases. And if your API will be uh, able to cater to them, uh, fulfill those use cases of the users, then they will get integrated. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer some questions later.